Okay, thank you, Maria, and thank you, Marcel. That actually, uh, by he presenting his case study, answered a question from the audience that was asking about experiences specifically uh, from Eastern Africa. So thank you for that. Um, so the first question I would ask you to answer is, who are the key partners and stakeholders, well, apart from public institutions, that the private sector needs to be interacting and collaborating with at the field level? I mean, I think uh, previous presenters were quite clear about the need for strengthening collaboration between private and public sector, but who are the other stakeholders that the private sector has to engage with to, uh, in the field of uh, insurance-based uh, products? Thank you. Over to you, Marcel. Yes, thank you, Bianca. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can. Uh, Please. Okay, good. I uh, wasn't quite sure whether uh, I'm, I'm on, on, on air. Good. Now, uh, to, to the question. Um, the, 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 what I just explained and presented here is the administration part. And of course, this is just uh, one piece of the entire picture, which obviously makes this working. And if you're going to ask me who else is going to be involved, uh, of course, on the private sector, of course, it has been Celsius Pro providing those services to APA, but obviously you're also going to need uh, risk takers uh, at the end of the day who are going to uh, assume the risk, uh, which has been in this case uh, V3. Um, who else was involved in, uh, in, in the design or in, uh, in the arrangement of, the, of, the, of this entire program from the private sector uh, on the more on the international side? I do not know that. Uh, uh, it could well be that there has been other ones. Maybe somebody else here on the panel has uh, this knowledge and can share that. But of course, on the local side, uh, UP obviously is a, a, a private insurance company who has been uh, uh, heavily actually uh, participating and uh, supporting this program from, from, from the real beginning. Uh, thank you, Marcel, for your answer. Um, we have actually time for another question that came from the audience. And um, the, the question would be, how could uh, the, any national scheme uh, be made sustainable, especially where government is the part paying the premiums? For example, you mentioned the, the case of Kenya, where the government uh, provided the 100%, I think you, you mentioned, of the premium, at least at the beginning of the program. So how can this make sustainable over time? Uh, that's a good, yeah, thank you. Actually, that's a very good question. Uh, first of all, my experience is what uh, doesn't cost anything has no value. That's the first thing. But of course, that you're going to get something up and running, you need to have uh, a certain body, ideally the government, maybe in the, in the, in the first phase, who is going to step in and finance that in the beginning, that you're going to, that you're going to reach a critical mass before then actually you can enter into like a second stage and um, let's say transferring certain responsibilities over to the individual beneficiaries of the program and designing or developing the program in, in a way where the value is seen and obviously also uh, the value which is seen uh, puts a price tag to it, where the farmer, at the end of the day, uh, takes the responsibility to see the values and, and, and pays a certain amount of premium. And all the well-established um, agro program on this planet, uh, for instance, uh, we can take uh, Mexico as a case, as, 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 for, as, a, uh, as an example, or the US, for instance, as well. So all those schemes are heavily being subsidized not 100%, partially subsidized to premium by the government, and also a large amount of the design and the, the process is actually dictated uh, by, 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 by certain ministry. And I think, I do not have the recipe, but I just believe that if, as I said before, that you're gonna create or reach a critical mess, there must be maybe in the beginning a larger amount of support 
financial financial and, and technical support from from government and then over time you're gonna you're gonna decrease this kind of uh, support and making the farmers more and more responsible for their own for their own business okay thank you Marcel, very much for your answer you might not have the recipe but and we know that one size does not fit all but anyway your uh, your thoughts were very uh, interesting and useful to share